In this episode, I'll show you a technique that will help you add punch to your portraits. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It's the camera store that has everything for photographers and videographers and audio engineers. You name it, they've got it. Check them out at Adorama.com. Well, today I'm going to be showing you one simple trick for increasing the quality of your portraits. It's very easy, but to show you the start of this, I want to show you the key light, and this is our giant seven-foot parabolic umbrella made by Westcott. I'm shooting a pro photo into that. That's our key light, and I'm shooting this with my Leica. I've got a 135 millimeter lens, and we're going to be shooting the star of the show, which is not this stuff, but she's actually right here. This is Hannah. Now, Hannah is a fantastic model, but if we don't have the correct light, well, her portrait's not going to be very good. So one of the things that you can do, it's very, very simple. You can do this with speed lights. You can do this with studio strobes. You can even do it with reflectors if you do it just right. But what we want to do is we want to add what I call kicker lights. Now what these will do, these two lights right here, they are actually going to come and add, so look straight ahead. So if your model's looking straight at the camera, you're gonna add a highlight on the cheekbones, on the hair, on the shoulders, and that is actually going to sort of shape what your model's face looks like. Now this works great with anyone that has a strong jawline, great cheekbones, pretty much anybody is gonna look good with this kind of light. Now to do this, what you wanna do is you wanna have two soft sources of light that are set at an equal distance, so equal distance on each side of your subject, shooting forward into the camera. And what that's going to do is it's just going to sort of feather some light across their cheeks and it will look fantastic. Now to do this, we have to meter everything. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab my meter. Now to meter the key light, I'm going to meter straight into the camera, which is right there. And I'm gonna set this right here and I'll meter that. And that meter is right at F11. Now what I want to do as a starting point is I want to make sure that these both are also at F11. In other words, the lighting ratio should be one to one. Now once you do that, you don't have to stay there. What you can do is you can make adjustments to your lights. So you can take these lights up or down. Basically you season to taste by shooting and looking at the photos on your computer to figure out exactly how much light you have falling on those cheekbones. So some people, a little bit more light works great, others not so much. Now to really make sure that you can see how this is uh, working and the, the effect it has on our model, we're shooting on a dark background, a black background. Now ideally, we'd be shooting on something that has a little bit of color, maybe outside, but for right now, I just wanna make sure that you can see the effect of this, but we're gonna make sure we meter this. So to do that, what I wanna do is I wanna take this lumosphere put it down. I want to make sure I'm only getting the light that's coming from this light source. And so I'm going to put the lumosphere down. I'm going to point it at that light and then I'm going to meter this. And so when we do that, that also meters F11. I'll meter the other side. Again, that's metering at F11. So we know the exposure is the same. So I've metered all three lights, my key light and my two kicker lights. We're at F11, and then we want to take some pictures and make sure everything works out. Now, here's one other thing that well, we didn't leave set up here, but it's a very important thing to note. When you have lights like this, the light is going straight into the lens of your camera. So that can cause issues with lens flare, and so normally what you'll do is you'll get a flag, something like this, and you'll block the light that's coming into the camera and you'll make sure that it still falls on your subject. So you're doing this to block the light from the camera. See, there it is going into the camera. Here it is blocked out, but the light can still hit the model. You wanna do that and it's as simple as having somebody hold this like that or if you have some fancy flags, you can put those on C stands, whatever. We left those out so we could actually show you the lighting setup, but in the final shots that I'll show you, we have those flags in. So let's take a look at how this works. So here is a shot of just our key light. Now it looks a little underexposed, but if you look at the second shot, this is the shot of our kicker lights, you can see that we actually have some spill that's falling onto the front of Hannah. Those two lights combined, here's our last shot, shows a proper exposure with those beautiful highlights on her cheeks and everything looks great. Well, now that you've seen how we've set this up, I'm gonna shoot some pictures and we'll show you the results.
Well, you can see by these pictures that a simple technique can really add some punch to your portraits. And the awesome thing about this technique is you can do it without all this fancy gear. You can do this with speed lights, you can do it with studio strobes, you can even do this with natural light. If you have some really strong backlight, you can add a speed light to fill in the front of your model and you'll get a similar effect. Now make sure you meter everything and then sort of season to taste. So you're gonna increase or decrease the power of these kickers to either add or subtract light. It really depends on the shape of your model's face and how things are working out. And so you can really play with this to get some awesome effects. And the other thing that's really cool is you can shoot this in a small space. We're shooting in a converted two car garage. So you don't need a big fancy studio to do this. You can do this on location or wherever you are. Well, thank you so much, Hannah, for this awesome photo shoot. Now, don't forget, if you want to learn about metering or lighting or some different lighting techniques or shooting in small studios, you can learn all about that at the Adorama Learning Center. It's absolutely free. Make sure you check that out. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV again. It's free, so why not do that? We don't want you to miss a single episode. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you again next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.